All right, so in this video, we're going to do another optimization problem. Um, the third one that I have should be floating around. And the idea in this one is we're making a rain gutter. Okay, so the basic idea is you've got um, a piece of metal that's 30 centimeters long. So I broke it up into three sections of 10 centimeters each. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the left side and we're going to bend it up and then we're going to do the same thing with the right side we're going to bend it up so we're bending the metal up to get this new shape that we have here Okay, and the idea is we want to figure out at what angle theta we should bend this metal so that this gutter, imagine we're kind of looking at a cross section so the water is flowing through it um, we want this gutter to basically be able to transport as much water as possible. Okay, so we could bend it all the way up and just make a little box. Whoops, and then um, you know I could make it. Probably wouldn't want to make it flat. It's not going to hold much water at all then. So we're trying to figure out what angle is best. <clears throat> okay, and the way to get started on this one is I'm going to make another little line across the top okay and intuitive intuitively to me I'm thinking well there's kind of I kinda of see a, a rectangle in here and then I see two little triangles in here on the side so really if you think about this as being an area if I maximize this kind of cross-sectional area I mean that should maximize the amount of water that can be transported okay so if this is the angle theta down here, that means each one of these angles would also be theta. Okay, and I'll call this little top part height, and maybe I'll call the side part w for width of the triangle. Okay, so the area simply of this gutter is going to be sort of the rectangular part. part in the middle and then we've got two times the the area of the triangles okay so I'm being a little sloppy here but that's the basic idea well the area of the rectangle is going to be its base but we know its base is 10 we're gonna have to figure out its height okay because depending on how high up we bend it the height is going to change and then we have two triangles and again triangles have area one-half the normally you say base but I'll call it the width times the height so in this case I've got to figure out the height in terms of theta and it would be nice to figure out the width and again the height in terms of theta so if we look back up here at our triangle though we know that this since this original part was 10 so I'm going to kinda bring this triangle down here this triangular portion so here's my angle theta that was up there in the top left corner we know that this thing has width or excuse me the hypotenuse is 10 because that's the size that's the length of the gutter before we bent it up right this was 10 we bent it up it's still 10 so I need to find expressions for the width and the height. Well, let's see if we can't figure that out. So sine of theta, remember sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. So it says the height is going to have value 10 sine theta. And likewise, if we look at cosine of theta, remember cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse again the hypotenuse being 10 in this case so we'll get that 10 cosine of theta is equal to the width okay so now I have expressions for the height and the width that I can plug into my area formula and again that's what I'm trying to maximize in this problem alright so let's plug that stuff in if I plug again the h value in I'll have 10 times sine theta and now I've got to plug in the width and the height 
Okay, so again we said the width is 10 cosine theta and the height is 10 sine theta. Again, obviously the other triangle symmetric, it's going to be the same thing and I've already accounted for the fact that I have two of those triangles in my formula. So, let's see, if we simplify this down, it looks like we get 100 sine theta plus 100 cosine theta times sine theta. And this is now the thing that I am basically trying to maximize, which means we now have to take a derivative of it. So now we'll take the derivative, try to find critical points, justify that those are a maximum, and we'll have the angle at which we need to bend our gutters. All right, so if I take the derivative of this thing, the derivative of sine theta is again just cosine theta, so we'll get 100 cosine theta. I'll leave the 100 out front, and I'll do the product rule on the inside. So the derivative of cosine, I'll get negative sine theta, but I've already got a sine theta, so I'll get negative sine squared theta. Plus, I've got a cosine theta. If I take the derivative of the sine theta, I'll get another cosine theta, so that'll give me cosine squared of theta. So what have I got? I've got 100 cosine theta minus 100 sine squared theta plus 100 cosine squared theta. Okay, at this point now I think, oof, okay, well I've done the uh, I've done the derivative part of it, and now I just simply need to find the critical numbers of it. And the key in this case is to get rid of the sine squared theta. Remember we know that cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to 1, so that means simply that sine squared of theta is going to be 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And the idea is now I can turn my problem into uh, an equation involving only cosines. And usually if I can turn it into just one thing, that ends up being better. It usually ends up making things a little bit easier to solve. All right, so let me go down here. I have 100 cosine theta minus 100. I'm going to plug in that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared theta. Then I've got plus another 100, my original 100 cosine squared theta floating around. Squeeze that back over there. So now let's just clean this up. I've got 100 cosine theta minus 100. I'll get plus 100 cosine squared theta and then I have my original 100 cosine squared theta. This is now just a quadratic equation in cosine of theta. So the same way if this said 100x uh, minus 100 plus 100x squared plus 100x squared, we can solve it the same way. So I'm going to combine my two 100 cosine squared thetas and get 200 cosine squared theta. I'll write my positive 100 cosine theta next and then I have minus 100 floating around. Well now I can factor out 100 and then I'm left with 2 cosine squared of theta plus cosine of theta minus 1 and now we simply need to factor out the original part so I'm just going to do it just like again it was a quadratic in x so I have a cosine theta, a 2 cosine theta, and a cosine theta well, let's see. I need to get negative 1, so I know I need a plus 1 and a minus 1, but I want a plus cosine theta. So I think those values should work. 2 cosine theta minus 1, cosine theta plus 1. And now if we set each piece equal to 0, I'm starting to run out of time here, we'll get cosine theta equals 1 half, cosine theta equals negative 1, well, if cosine of theta equals negative 1, that's going to give you an angle of pi, or 180 degrees, um, which doesn't really make sense if you think about the context of the problem and bending. The other angle would be when cosine of theta equals 1 half. Well, when does cosine of theta equal 1 half? Pretty sure that's at pi over 3, or 60 degrees. So you could justify that this is going to give you a maximum value because I'm pretty much out of time on my 10 minute time limit. 
So it says, basically in conclusion, if you're making gutters out there, bend your gutters at 60 degrees. Um, that will allow people to trans transport the most water off the roof when it pours down rain. Hope this problem makes some sense. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to visit my website. I've got lots of other, I've got a couple other optimization problems and lots of other videos on there as well.